The purpose of this presentation is to demonstrate why Hermann Potocnik Nordung was futurist. Potocnik's only work, the 1929 book Das Problem der Befahrung des Weltraums, The Problem of Space Travel, best illustrates that he was a futurist who attempted to forecast developments in the space technology that was in its infancy phase at the time when the book was written. Nordung's work belongs to a group of early pioneering work on theory of space travel. His ideas have influenced further scientific research in the field, as well as helped to popularize the ideas of space travel. Some of his far-fetched predictions actually came to realization years after the book was published. Nordup was born on 22nd December 1892 in Pula, Croatia, and died in Vienna on 27th August 1929. He finished the Technical Military Academy in Vienna and served in the World War I in Austro-Hungarian Army. After the war, Nordung studied electrical engineering at the Technical Institute in Vienna, leaving the army in 1919. After the World War I, Nordung became interested in spaceflight and took active role in studying astronautics during the last years of his life. He corresponded with other two important astronautics and rocketry pioneers, Hermann Obert and Guido von Birkett. With Obert's support, Nordung published his book in 1929 in Berlin and soon after died from tuberculosis. Nordung's 1929 book, The Problem of Space Travel, was divided into three major themes. Nordung's exploration of the problems related to the Earth's gravity and departing the planet, exploration of problems in space, and his suggestions on how to design space station with proposals on possible employment of the space station for civilian and military purposes. In the book, Nordung displayed exceptional scholarly argument by supporting his claims with calculations and graphs and by referring to the work of other scientists in the fields of physics, aerodynamics, astronautics and rocketry. The references included the fathers of astronautics Konstantin Tsiolkovsky, Robert Goddard and Hermann Obert. After providing theoretical background supported with his calculations and graphs, Nordung offered his forecasts in relation to development of space technology. The forecasts can be divided into three groups, forecasts about rockets, space stations, and other technology. Among other things, Norton completely refuted the ideas about using the cannon to shoot the rocket into space. He argued for the usage of liquid fuel based on hydrocarbon compounds mixed with oxygen and believed that the space rocket will be able to fly as an air-space plane. Nordung's forecasts about the space station technology were among his most original ideas. These forecasts included suggestions on the orbit of space station, use of solar power, radio waves as medium for communication, partitioning of the space station in various components, and creation of artificial gravity. Nordung's other ideas and forecasts were related to the design of spacesuits, use of space station for space and earth observations and research, including construction of powerful telescopes. He also suggested using space station in military purposes by constructing huge space mirrors that would be able to focus the power of sun on the targeted area. Nordung's publication received lots of negative criticism. Many have even dismissed Nordung's ideas as absurd. The magazine De Rakete argued that Norton have, quotes, paid too little attention to recent contributions to the topic of spaceflight. Science writer and spaceflight enthusiast Willie Lay and pioneer of astronautics Guido von Pirquet heavily criticized Norton. On the other hand, many acknowledge Norton's contributions to the field of spaceflight. Hermann Obert made numerous references to Norton's work in his book. The famous rocket scientist Werner von Braun was also influenced by Norton's work. Even Willy Lay later credited Nordung for the work on spaceflight and rockets. Furthermore, Nordung's book had an immediate influence on popular culture. It helped popularization of aeronautics in Germany. The story Lonetta by Jan von Braun was inspired by Nordung's book, as was GM's Walsh's story Vandals from Void. In the United States, the parts of Nordung's book were published in the 1929 issue of Science Wonder Stories magazine. The full translation of Nordung's book in the United States had to wait until 1993. On the other hand, the book was translated in Russian in 1930s and it may have played a role in the Soviet Union space program development. British scientists also used Nordung's book to improve his space station design in the late 1930s. Arthur C. Clarke knew Nordung's work well. He referenced Nordung's work in his article Extraterrestrial Relays, and apparently Nordung's design for space station inspired Clark's station in the novel 2010 Odyssey 2. Reflecting on Nordung's work, Clark once wrote, What an incredible man Potocnik must have been, perhaps in some ways quite as remarkable as Obert. 
Arthur C. Clarke was also one of the people who credited Nordung with envisioning radio waves as the medium for communication between space and Earth. Today, communication between Earth and various human-made objects and missions in space is possible thanks to radio waves. The rovers at Mars also use radio waves to communicate with Earth. Nordung believed that the space station should consist of separate units with different functions. The International Space Station is an example that this concept had also became a reality. In fact, NASA acknowledged implementation of Potochnik's idea of modules with different functions on the International Space Station. Nordung attempted to predict possible purposes for the space station. Some of them were far-fetched, but some were not. Some of the purposes that Nordung envisioned and that are today in practice on the International Space Station and other space vehicles are physical and chemical experiments, use of space telescopes, zero-gravity experiments, and some others. Nordung also envisioned spacesuits as well as rockets that would be able to land like aircrafts. He argued that spacesuits will have to contain some form of flexible metal structure. The boots for the Apollo spacesuits included metal woven fabric and Teflon coated glass fiber cloth. Furthermore, Space Shuttle program brought to realization visions of rockets that would behave like air. Several points in the presentation illustrate that Hermann Potochnik Nordung was futurist. His ideas were far ahead of his time. They influenced many rocket scientists and science fiction writers. In the long run, some of his ideas became a reality, while others, like space station rooms, quotes, furnished with modern-day comforts, remain in the realm of optimistic dreams. <laughs>